Chapter Twenty Two of the Night Side of New York by members of the New York Press. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Saturday Night at the Old Bowery. It's a close, murky Saturday night in December. There's a drizzly rain dropping from the leaden heavens. Its drops are very fine, almost imperceptible. Yet you are not mistaken about its raining, for your overcoat is damp and heavy, your cigar is moist and draws hard and the flags are slippery with a damp greasy slime the car drivers in the street before you are sure it means rain for their heads and shoulders are seen above the steam of their jaded horses enveloped in the big capes of those everlasting blue coats so dear to the heart of every practical horse-car driver the city over why i have spoken of the rain is that i have been for a mortal hour puffing a vile cigar a denizen of this quarter before the dingy granite pillars which like some mythical quartet of stone giants guard the entrance of this notorious playhouse the old drury of new york i came to my post very early my dear reader not to get a front seat as you may infer but to mark from the first the gradual gathering of that squalid band of urchins who never fail on benefit nights to besiege the causeway leading to the pit of this old castle of fun and fierce acting since i first strolled out of that beer garden next door where i had been weak enough to invest in this vile cigar i have seen a whole row of apple stands and peanut stalls spring into light on the sidewalk and there is now a gallery of withered old toothless faces very ghastly in the lurid light of their torches hovering over their store of pippins and nuts then i have seen too those canvas transparencies flapping overhead grow luminous as if by magic and the smell of gas about me is very strong speaking of those weird paintings up there I don't think Mr. Barnum, in the palmiest days of the old museum, dreamed of such a display in the free art line. When the magic lantern man puts in the slide of Noah coming out of the ark, before removing the Daniel in the lion's den, the white sheet before the audience is very much like the impression I got of those artistic daubs. There hangs Foxy, with a red nose, green eyelids, and yellow hands and there hangs fanny herring in blue stockings and purple shoes shoving up a yellow hill an orange-colored ash-cart with the assistance of a couple of sky-blue terriers with pink eyes but with the fog and drizzle the bad lights and the glaring lights these painted marvels have that mixed appearance of that magic lantern catastrophe i had not loitered long after the gas blazed up when from up the street, and from down the street, and from across the street, there came little squads of dirty, ragged urchins, the true gammon of New York. These at once made a gymnasium of the stone steps, stood on their heads upon the pavements, or climbed like locusts the neighboring lamp posts, itching for mischief, poking fun furiously. They were the merriest gang of young daredevils I have seen in a long day. It was not long before they were recruited by a fresh lot of young sardines from somewhere else. Then they went in for more monkey shines until the door should be unbarred. They seemed to know each other very well, as if they were some young club of genial spirits that had been organized outside of the barriers of society for a long while. What funny habiliments they sported! It had never been my experience to see old clothes thrown upon young limbs so grotesquely. The coat that would have been a fit for a corpulent youth nearly buried a skinny form, the height of your cane. And on the other hand, young dropsy's legs and arms were like links of dried balonies in the garments which misfortune's raffle had drawn for him. Hats without rims, hats of fur, dreadfully plucked with free ventilation for the scalp, caps with big tips like little porches of leather, caps without tips, or, if a tip still clung to it, it was by a single thread and dangled on the wearer's cheek like the husk of a banana. The majority seemed to have a weakness for the costumes of the army and the navy. 
where a domestic tailor had clipped the skirts of a long blue military coat he had spared the two buttons of the waistband and they rested on the bare heels like a set of veritable spurs shoes and boots and remember it's a december night are rather scarce and those by which these savoyards could have sworn by grinned fearfully with sets of naked toes one young sport he had seen scarcely ten such winters rejoiced in a pair of odd mated rubber overshoes about the dimensions of snowshoes they saluted him as gums a youngster with a childish face and clear blue eyes now shuffled upon the scene oh lordy here's horace just see his get up a shout of laughter went up and horace was swallowed in the ragged mob horace sported a big army cap like a huge blue extinguisher he wrapped his wiry form in a cut-down long-napped white beaver coat the lapels of which were a foot square and shingled his ankles as if he stood between a couple of placards i had seen the latest caricature on the philosopher of the tribune but this second edition of h g swamped it i knew that that young rogue had counted upon the effect of his white coat and he enjoyed his christening with a gleeful face and a sparkle in his blue eyes oh for the pencil of a beard or a baloo to portray those saucy pug noses those dirty and begrimed faces faces with bars of blacking like the shadows of small gridirons faces with woeful bruised peepers faces with fun flashing eyes faces of striplings yet so old and haggard faces full of evil and deceit every mother's son of them had his fists anchored in his breeches pockets and swaggered about nudging each other's ribs with their sharp little elbows they were not many minutes together before a battle took place someone had tripped gums and one of his old shoes flew into the air i think he of the white coat was the rascal but being dubbed a philosopher he did his best to look very wise but a slap on the side of the ridge of his white collar upset his dignity and horace went in and his bony fists rattled away on the close-shaven pate of gums the doors are now unbarred and this ragged pent-up little utica rends itself but not without much more scratching and much swearing oh the cold-blooded oaths that rang from those young lips as the passage to the pit is by a sort of cellar door i lost sight of the young scamps as the last one pitched down its gloomy passage in the human stream in a whirlpool of fellow beings nudging their way to the boxes and the upper tiers i now found myself it was a terrible struggle females screaming were eddied around and around until their very faces were in a wire cage of their own skeletons look out for pickpockets shouted a metropolitan everybody then tried to button his coat over his breast and everybody gave it up as a bad job in at last but with the heat of that exertion the smell of the hot gas the fetid breath of two thousand souls not particular many as to the quality of their gin what a sweltering bath follows the usher sees a ticket clutched before him and a breathless individual saying wildly where he points to a distant part of the house and the way to it is through a sea of humanity a sort of a dead sea for one can walk on it easier than he can dive through it i shall never know how i got there at last all i remember now are the low curses the angry growls and a road over corns and bunions the prompter's bell tingles and then tingles again the bearded germans of the orchestra hush their music and the big field of green bays shoots to the cobweb arch now is the time to scan the scene that teeming house that instant when all faces are turned eagerly to the footlights waiting breathlessly the first sound of the actor's voice the restlessness of that tossing sea of humanity is at a dead calm now every nook and cranny is occupied none too young 
none too old to be there at the rise of the curtain the suckling infant mewing and sucking in its mother's arms the youngster rubbing his sleepy eyes the timid miss half frightened with the great mob and longing for the fairy world to be created elder boys and elder sisters mothers fathers and the wrinkled old grandsire many of these men sit in their shirt-sleeves sweating in the humid atmosphere women are giving suck to fat infants blue-shirted sailors encircle their black-eyed susans with brawny arms they make no bones of showing their honest love in this democratic temple of thespis division street milliners black-eyed rosy-cheeked and flashy-dressed sit close to their jealous-eyed lovers little jew boys with glossy ringlets and beady black eyes with teeth and noses like their fat mamas and avaricious-looking papas are yawning everywhere then there is a great crowd of roughs prentice boys and pale german tailors the latter with their legs uncrossed for a relaxation emaciated german and italian barbers you know them from their dirty linen their clean-shaven cheeks and their locks redolent with bear's grease through this mass wandering from pit to gallery go the red-shirted peanut vendors and almost every jaw in the vast concern is crushing nutshells you fancy you hear it in the lulls of play like a low unbroken growl in the boxes sit some very handsome females rather loudly dressed to be sure but beauty will beam and flash from any setting lean over the balcony and behold in the depths below the famous pit now crowded by that gang of little outlaws we parted with a short time ago of old times of a bygone age is this institution in no other theatre in the whole town is that choice spot yielded to the unwashed but this is the bowery and those squally little spectators so busy scratching their close-mown poles so vigorously pummeling each other so unmercifully rattaned by despotic ushers they are its best patrons and are they not in their light great critics too don't they know when to laugh when to blubber and when to applaud and don't they know when to hiss though what a fiat is their withering hiss what poor actor dare brave it it has gone deep deep into many a poor player's heart and crushed him for ever the royal road to a newsboy's heart is to rant in style versatile eddie and vigorous boniface are the lads in our day for the newsboy's stamps ranting is out of the female line but bowery actresses have a substitute for it at the proper moment they draw themselves up in a rigid statue they flash their big eyes they dash about wildly their dishevelled hair with outstretched arms and protruding chins they then shriek out villain oh fanny herring what a tumult you have stirred up in the roused pit no help for it my dear lady see there's horace standing on his seat and swinging his big blue cap in a cloud of other caps encore encore and the pretty actress bows to the pit and there is more joy in her heart from the yells of those skinny little throats than from all the flowers that ladies and gents from above may pelt her with the bill of fare for an evening's entertainment at the old bowery is as long as your cane and the last piece takes us far into the night yet the big house sits it out and the little ones sleep it out and the tired actor well earns his pay i'll not criticize the acting a great part of the community thinks it's beyond the pale of criticism this peculiarity of tearing things to pieces and tossing around soups promiscuously and another thing those little ungodly imps down there have a great appreciation of virtue and pathos they dash their dirty fists into their peepers at the childish treble of a little eva and they cheer oh so lustily when chastity sets her heavy foot upon the villain's heart and points her sharp sword at his rascal throat they are very fickle in their bestowal of approbation 
and their little fires die out or swell into a hot volcano according to the vehemence of the actor wake me up when kirby dies said a veteran little denizen of the pit to his companions and he laid down on the bench to snooze mind your eye porgy said his companion before porgy had got a dozen winks i think there's something goin' to bust now porgy's friend had a keen scent for sensation as i came out at the end of the performances i again saw horace he had just rescued a butt from a watery grave in the gutter jiminy don't chaps about town smoke em awful short nowadays was the observation of the young philosopher the theatre is almost the only amusement that the ragged newsboy has apart from those of the senses the newsboy's lodging-house which has been the agent of so much good among this neglected class of our population find the late hours of the theatre a serious obstacle to their usefulness it is safe to say that if the managers of the two bowery theatres would close at an earlier hour say eleven o'clock they would prosper as greatly as at present and the boys who patronize their establishments would be much better off in body and mind an effort is about to be made to obtain this reform from the managers voluntarily instead of seeking legislative aid we are quite sure it will be for the interest of all to close the theatres early end of chapter twenty two end of the night side of new york by members of the new york press